This is the ZMAR Podcast. Elite Benefits of America helps small and mid-sized companies with their health insurance programs. And now, your host, Butch ZMAR. So, Ken, welcome back. Um, I love having our conversations. I think uh, our uh, our little note taken before we go um, record the um, the show or the you know the cast that uh, we have a pretty good conversation all around and goes bounces between sports and business and then insurance, of course, because that's what we do. But uh, so we tried to put together some rough notes, and um, here we are. We're going to talk about some renewals coming up and some self funded things and. Uh, and hopefully saving some employers some money on on health insurance. That's right. As always, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Appreciate the time. Enjoy the conversations. Yeah, yeah. We're heading to our busiest season when we're recording this, and uh, uh, renewals are you know hitting the street. They already have right, and so with large large market um, accounts. Um, they uh, there are the renewals for January one. I think are already in, and then the uh, small to mid sized market. We're just kind of waiting limbo for a week or so, and uh, we're getting rolling. So. Yesterday, when we spoke briefly about um, our talk topic today, you had talked about that you were you know, presenting or talking to a 900 Life group. You were talking about ways to save money, even with some of the products they already had. Yeah, so it's, it was good that our that our meeting got postponed because two things happened. Um, one, I got to do an analysis on that 900 Life group, and then number two was that we had a uh, renewal meeting with our with a, one of our clients that has 100 employees and 82 insured, and I'll dig a little deeper on that. But on the nine 900 life group, I mean, we just did. This is just the beginning of the conversations, but we just did estimates in terms of, you know, asking the question. And the meeting was with the CEO president, but asking the questions of, you know, what are you spending on healthcare, health insurance specifically. Um, and drill down even further to what is the cost per employee per year? And it kind of silence. Um, there was silence. He wasn't really sure exactly. So we used just averages. And I said, well, average average cost is about $10,000 per year per employee. So 900 employees, that'd be a $9 million spend. And, you know, his eyes kind of opened up. And I said, have you ever really drilled down and, and figured what your per employee per year profit is? And he said, what do you mean? Um, I said, well, if you take your per employee per year premium and you divide it by your gross profit, that's your per employee per year profit. And he, you know, his response was like, wow, that's a really different way to, to look at healthcare. And I said, well, we have to know, you know, it's a health insurance is one of your top three line items and you have to have some, some things in place to control the cost. I said, you know, you're, you have health insurance, but you truly are the health insurance company. Um, and what I mean by that is you're self-insured. All those premiums aren't going to pay for, to cover risk, right? You're paying for claims and you're managing it. So you truly are the insurance company. How are you managing your claims? Because your claims are going to drive your costs. And, and again, you know, silence, you're not really sure. I, I said, well, those are the things that I do. I said, I help you manage the cost of your health care and provide quality care for your members, for your employees. And that was just the beginning of our conversation. It really went down the path of, you know, his question to me was, what do you do and how do you do it? And my answer is, I manage health care costs and provide quality care for your employees. And I do it a number of different ways. Um, but before drilling down into a solution, you know, what's important to you about offering health insurance here? And, and I think that's the number one question in, on, in any size company. You know. It, Every, all of us in this, let's say, advisor broker world, basically do some of the same things. We just do it in a little different way at, at, at each firm. Um, but if we're not taking in consideration what's important to our client or to the employer, none of that stuff matters. It doesn't matter if you have the best HRI system, if you if you, you have the best stop loss program, if you have the best PBM. If we're not asking our clients what's important to them about offering health insurance, none of it matters. Um, so I think that always has to be number one. And we start to drill down on going back. I know I'm kind of talking circles here, but going back to per employee per year profit. When we were, you're at a company, like I was at an IT company, right? They don't care how much they're paying on health insurance. It's not an impact for them. They're making bank. They're making a ton of money. They said, we want the richest plan that we can possibly get that's easy for our, our, our office administration to administer. 
And why we want that? Because we want to recruit the best talent. We want the best people working here. We don't want them to be concerned about health insurance. So it's a very different conversation than I normally have at a, a manu- like I focus on a vertical of manufacturing and some nonprofits. They, they, their, their profit margin, the last co- conversation there at the 900 Life Group, I mean, their profit margin is 1.2. Their margin on their products, the small margin. If their health insurance goes up 9%, there goes that margin of profit. Yep. You know, control, controlling that is a big concern. Um, I kind of just went off there on a little tangent, but <laughs> it's wanted, all it's all good. Wanted to talk about a meeting that I had yesterday. That if we did the recording yesterday, we, it would, we wouldn't be able to talk about it. I wanted to put together in a graph. I just didn't have time. You know, obviously, our approach to um, a lot of the healthcare spending right is completely different than the rest. I always talked about math. Um, it's math going in, math going out, right? And we have to break it down to the employers that it's all about the money, right? It's all about money coming in. It's all about money coming out. Where's your dollars going, right? And CFOs for years and HR too, where they go into a blind and they're like, well, you know, we, we healthcare is different. Healthcare is different. We can't do anything on, on the health insurance premiums. But but again, it's 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 like, okay, wh- what dollars are going in? What are coming back? And where you can tr- trim the fat, just like any other line item in the expenses, whether you're at home or in your business. You know, on that point, I think I think there's let's say three different conversations. There's mm-hmm. a CEO, CEO owner conversation, a CFO, and then a HR conversation. And I think CEO, I mean, they, they want to grow profit, they want to grow the business, uh, the owner of the company because it's what is it, beneficial to them, right? It's beneficial mm-hmm. to the company to have that growth. C, CFO, they want certainty. They want to be able to say these are the numbers and this is how it works out. And then HR, mm-hmm. they want to make it easy. And not in a bad way. Um, they want they want to be able to say to their employees that you know what we're not raising your deductible. You know what where your contributions are going to stay the same. Um, you can enroll online. Like all all those things are what's important to HR. Uh, so I think there's three different conversations and identifying like who you're speaking to is is very important. Just as the same as we talked about earlier about asking them what's important to them about offering not even healthcare health insurance. Mm-hmm. To you and your staff, so it's got that has to be part of the conversation in the in the first meeting. Um, so yeah, I agree with you on math. What's it, what's coming in? What's going out? Uh, I mean, I think the simple, the, the the more we simplify this business, the easier it is for our clients. Yeah, for sure. You were gonna go into a thought about um, one of your meetings. So two 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 things. Um, one, just backtrack into that nine nine hundred life group. Um, I asked him the question about pharmacy. You know, I said, you realize a pharmacy is anywhere from 30 for 40% of your spend? Uh, no, I didn't. You know, we, we've done a, a pharmacy benefit contract review. I said, that's a, that's a good step. You know, like who you do it with a small PBM. I'm like, okay. You know, what I do is I use a procurement. So I'm working with 60 different PBMs, right? So we'll go out and almost use like an RFP kind of mindset with our PBMs and say pharmacy benefit managers and find the best one for them. That's going to true analysis and monitor the pharmacy use throughout the year, other than just doing a pharmacy contract review one time and letting it run. So we're mon- monitoring it throughout the year. Usually when I go back and look at groups like that, I usually reduce the cost on, the, on pharmacy by an additional 10%. So those are big numbers. Um, a group that size, I mean, you're talking millions of dollars just to spend on pharmacy. If you can reduce it, $1 million, like the last pharmacy contract review I did with a group that size, their PBM reduced their, their savings by 13.4%, which was $700,000, which was good. When we looked at it, we did an enhanced RX renewal offer. We, bu- we brought them up to a 22.8 savings, $1.1 million savings. I mean, that's, that's real money. That speaks volumes. And that's yeah. not changing. That's not disrupting. That's just oh, just running through what they're currently doing and making it better. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to get that in there before I, I transition to this group. This group yeah. that we had yeah. yesterday, we got high participation in this group, manufacturing company right in our back door, 100 life, so 100 eligible employees, and there's 82 participating. I mean, that's high. And the reason is, is their contribution on their, their uh, individual coverage is, is very high. It's almost 100%. So they're covering 90% of the cost employee that hardly pays anything. And what they do really well is communicate. So we have, we go, we go, we go back backwards in time here. We're not doing our open enrollment through email. That's mm-hmm. how they need to finalize it. But we have mandatory meetings 
of employee benefit communication. And the reason why that's so important is the CFO understands that we're, this is one of our top three line items. If we don't manage the cost and educate our employees on how to use their health care, we're, we're, the, we're missing the ball. You know, it, it's just, it doesn't make sense for us. We're spending so much on it. Why not make sure our employees truly understand it? So going back, we took this group over a year ago. They have 82 en- enrolled, and I'm just looking at my notes. Um, they, they were faced with a 15% renewal in the fully insured market. We got them down to a 7%. So they were spending 10500 per employee per year was their average. So I did the math. I have it in my, my notes here. That's $861,000 on health insurance. And my, my, my conversation was, was, okay, how is inflation? How are your cost of goods? Are you able to increase your salary's pay? I said, on top of that, you got a 7% increase on $861,000. How is that going to affect all those things? You know, and that's when we started to say, you know what? We need to do this a little differently. But so what we did for them is we moved them to the self-insured world, partially self-insured. So we reduced their total cost by 11%. We got them down to $779,000. That was a savings of $94,710 just by changing their funding mechanism, right? And the best part about that is, is this year, we were able to see their data, right? Mm-hmm. So we saw, we saw that of those 82 insured, 50% weren't really using their plan. So when, they're, when I say weren't really, maybe they're going for their annual physical, maybe yep. they, that's about it. Mm-hmm. So I said, you know what? Well, what's that number? So 41 times 10.5, right? 10,500 was $430,000. It's going directly to the insurance carrier, right? In the fully shared market. And you can't, it's just going there. It's making them money. Yep. And you're not using it. So that's almost half a million dollars that you're paying your insurance carrier to cover risk, which there is none. They're not using the plan. Mm-hmm. So now Definitely a great they're, point. they're self-insured now. So mm-hmm. instead of that money going to the insurance carrier, you know, obviously some is going for fixed costs and administration, but it's an ASO model, administrative services only. So they're retaining that money. It's basically their money that's staying there and they're going to use for future claims. So that was a big, big, just that alone is huge. Half a million dollars going back to you that you're going to use for future claims. Now the, the kicker is, is that the other 50% that are using the plan, the, the insurance that they're paying for it's overpaying in the fully insured world, the providers, three to six times a fair rate of reimbursement. So what that means is no one's looking at those claims. No one's, no one, the TPA is not reviewing them. Those claims are being, 90% of them are being auto adjudicated, which, which means that they're being paid immediately when they touch the insurance carrier's um, claims department. So getting them out of that, now we're controlling the cost by managing claims, right? So someone's going, all right, we need someone that needs an MRI. Well, we're looking at it. Is that a fair rate of reimbursement? And that's what our job is in our, in our TPA that's going to help us out, our third-party administrator. So I thought that this was a great example in terms of, one, moving your funding mechanism, how you pay for your health insurance, and then two, how you take, create transparency and, let's say, look under the hood to see what's going on. Yep. And overall, puts money back in the employer's pocket so they can do what? So they can have better negotiations with their supply, supply chain, with, their, with yep. suppliers. How they can increase salaries, how they can do whatever, invest in technology, whatever it is. They, it's their money. Yep. Well, right in the profits, right? I mean, you can do whatever you want. But you, you bring up a good point. You're like, so th- there's a lot that we do um, that goes into it, and people may have made excuses for years. And healthcare has always been this thing. Well, that's just the way it is. I remember years ago, just to give you a, a, it's not a financial one, but, you know, I thought it was interesting that, um, mm-hmm a family member had taken off of work to go to the doctor. And I said, why did they take off work? And said, well, because you don't know how long you're waiting in the waiting room. I'm like, so why do we have to make our life changes for the healthcare world, right? And that's just one example. Now when it comes to finances, right? And so um, there's two parts of the financing mechanism, right? You got the funding piece, which a lot of brokers try to focus on a lot of times, but they never focus on the expense side, right? How much is spending? What Where is it going? What's being allocated for? How much is being retained, right? Administrative costs, some of the stuff that you had talked about. But no one ever goes through it, right? And and when I say nobody, it's a small percentage of the employer market out there that actually go ahead, dives through this. Sure, large groups are traditionally self-funded, but even in the 
even in that spectrum, like they're not using the data to the best of the leverage they possibly can, right? Now, a lot of them get complacent. Um, they think that, all right, we just made a move. We're saving money. We're not scrutinizing it uh, enough, right? And we're not looking at the claims report. Like you just went through, you know, one of the scenarios with the 900 Life Group and talked about the pharmacy benefit manager, right? So you were able to figure out a different way on the pharmacy benefit manager to save $1 million, right? Like, like, yeah, I mean, you had a PBM, which is what some employers don't even have access to. And this employer did, so they're ahead in the right track, right? And so, but they're not, they, they need to continuously keep moving. And um, because like you had said, you know, the transparency side, right? But not only the transparency is what are you going to do with the numbers, right? And so if if your manufacturer, you know, the warehouse, the products that you're, or vendors you're working with, the costs go up and your margins get smaller, it's the same thing that's happening with healthcare. Your margins are getting smaller specifically um, because of healthcare and margins in this case are going to be profits, right? What you can do to grow and what you can do to expand uh, or even just profit, right? Some people bleed cash so many years, they're like, you know what? I think think that we need to make some profit, maybe put some things in R and D for a little bit, right? Like just do something different. Yeah, well, hundred percent. Um, and we talk about I'm sure we all have done this. I mean, no, I I did too, it was traditional cost shifting, right? Like uh we get our renewal and we're like, we we need to change plan designs or we're gonna have to ask employees to pay more. And what will we do? We brought them to I remember back in two thousand three when we started talking about HDAP, high deductible health plans. That was going to be a solution, right? We were going to drive consumer-driven healthcare. Employees had more skin in the game. There was more exposure. Well, now I look at those and I say, you know what? Your employees are functionally uninsured. Yes. <laughs> no, they don't, they don't yeah. want to use their deductible. They're like, yeah. it, you know, to the point of saying, you know what? You got an employee making 75 grand, let's say after taxes, 50 something, plus their health insurance contributions and everything else they got to pay for. And they're exposed to a, a $5,000 family deductible or, or even if it's lower, 3000 you know what they're going to do? They're not going to go for health care. They're not going to use their plan because they don't want to pay out of pocket. And what's going to happen if it's something that turns into a chronic illness? No one's going to get whacked or who's going to end up paying that bill? It's you, the employer, because your health insurance is going to continue to go up. So one of the things I, I really love to do, and it, it's funny, like I'm almost laughing at myself because years ago, I would, I would never say this. I, I didn't know any better. I, I would love to see the employer, you know, put some of that money back into their plans and give them richer plans. Give them plans it can use. Go in, allow them to go to their their own PCP, their own their own doctor for a twenty dollar copay, and let mm -hmm. let them let them get some care. You know, when they're hit with a high deductible and they got to walk in and pay a hundred dollars and change just to have a a check, uh, just like hey, I'm not feeling good. Ninety percent of them aren't going to do it. Which, you it, know, it, it, obviously, give them like you said, give them something that they could actually use, right? Um, and so, um, on a, on a side note, I can, and you review this too, where I came up with this elite benefits playbook, there's a section in there that talks about employee incentives. One of the biggest questions, oh, you mean wellness, right? And, uh, no, no, no. what I mean is, <laughs> is providing, providing employees a financial incentive to go make better decisions, right? And so we're providing them. Just imagine if you could provide a health plan that not only reduced your cost, but you could send your employees to the best clinics in the entire country and then actually um, virtually eliminate their out-of-pocket expenses and uh, at least make it a little bit more affordable. In some cases, just completely make it zero. Your employee to gets diagnosed with cancer goes to the, some of the best cancer clinics in the country and they pay zero out-of-pocket. What kind of impact would that make on productivity and loyalty to the company? You know, you got you to gotta get a sign behind you with that, with that playbook because that, that is... Yeah. That is, <laughs> that is a good, I love what you did there. And then yeah. it, it truly helps someone, let's say, get a pulse on what's going on, but also gives them, I mean, it's a great title playbook. It's, it's the way you mm -hmm. can, you know, it's, it's like a football player having, having the plays behind the scenes, um, allowing you to take a, a look at healthcare with a, with a mission, with a, with a design, with a, with a plan. Um, mm -hmm. a lot, I think a lot of us, is, if, I see it all the time. A lot of our clients are blind. Let's say they talk about mm -hmm. it once a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I love the fact that you brought up, is it, it's not wellness. Like right. I remember uh, wellness is somewhat, uh, I hate to say it like this way because I have relationships with a lot of wellness companies, but somewhat of a joke when it talks about truly controlling the cost. Um, but you can't change human behavior, right? Like you can implement this stuff. But I see it all the time. Who's on the wellness plan? Who's on the walking plan? You know who's on it? The healthy people that are already walking. Mm -hmm. It's not the people that don't walk. It doesn't change their lifestyle. 
it doesn't have a true ROI on, let's say, the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So yep. my thought for wellness is, is, is kind of jaded um, yep. just because I think it was such a hot topic 10, five, 10 years ago. I mean, it, now we see Even like longer. everyone's got, yeah. we have it here. We have it at my own, my own, my own firm. Listen up. Butch wants to give you your own elite benefits playbook and it's absolutely free from business strategy to benefit strategy. Every step from the start through implementation, account setup, and open enrollment. Working through service requests and the process of renewals. A valuable look at your company, your insurance options, and how to make the process easier on you. Go now to EliteBenefits.net slash playbook and get your free Elite Benefits Playbook. Or give Butch a call today, 708-535-3006. A thought kind of occurred in my mind just a couple minutes ago and said, because you're a big, huge hockey player, right? And uh, I play because of my kids. Um, I didn't play growing up like you did, and uh, I, I missed out, but it's a lot of fun. But when you were saying that, where, you know, it, sometimes it doesn't have to be like true, you know, actual play diagrams, right? It, it could be the intentions, right? Because I have discovered in my my beer league, right? And so when 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 you don't have structure and you have boundaries right like for positioning and where you're supposed to be uh you get winded you get winded you work too hard you feel like you're skating up and down the ice and you're not accomplishing anything and all of a sudden you come off the ice and you're like holy smokes you know if i tracked all those skate uh the skating it's probably two miles just in one shift right um whereas if you go out there and have those boundaries right you have a little structure you're a winger you stay in your winger position right you stay on the point whatever it might be, right? All of a sudden, you, you, you're tired because you're exerting yourself, but you're not winded, right? And a lot of our employers, right, they get winded from this healthcare, right? Because they keep spinning the wheels, you know, dealing with the same renewals all the time. There's, they don't know what to do. There's, they're just like, you know, it's like some hockey player just running all over the ice with no structure and they just get winded and they're not helping the team at all. Well, you just, you just made me think of going back in time here. Where I had a coach that used to tell us, you know, this is a number, this, this is a game of stats, and then it's, a, it's a great analogy to healthcare, health insurance, where you start to be transparent and look at what your employees are using. But in, in, in the hockey world, he used to say that, listen, we need to shoot on net more than they do. If we have more shots in them, our ratio of goals to shots will go up. He goes, so all of you that you know, are thinking about taking a shot. He's like, shoot the puck on net. <laughs> he goes, yep. do not miss the net. He goes, the chance of it going in may be slim, but the fact that you're shooting, I mean, the old quote by Gretzky is, is you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Well, transition that to, to health insurance. Well, if you get your employees engaging with their PCP, their own doctor, mm -hmm. if they're just going for their annual checkup, the chance of you controlling a large cost claim goes up dramatically. Mm -hmm. so that's uh kind of funny how that came yeah. out but i mean yeah it, we kind of clo close up on this uh with, with with what you're saying right because um the picture i had my mind when you were talking and you brought you know shots on net you know there there's one thing about shots on nets and, and there's a uh true shots on net right because how many times you shoot at the net and you miss it right and so <laughs> and and the first thing that came to mind when you were talking about that was okay yeah you claim you're evaluating right your spreadsheet and rates your spreadsheet and plans right and you're like, oh, we compared other plans. We're going to raise the deductible. I feel like you're just missing the net the whole time, right? Those are not real shots on net, right? You could, and in fact, if you hit the pipe, it still doesn't count. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to point that out. Let's get some more shots on net. Let's get some goals in for these employers out there. And uh, let's uh, let's start reversing the trend of healthcare. So, without a doubt, man. Uh, yep. Thanks again. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, Ken. And we'll have you back. We'll talk about more more employer topics and maybe some hockey stuff in between. Sounds good. Yeah.